Hello, statisticians. Mr. Young Saver here from Skew the Script. One of the biggest policy discussions in America from year to year is how much should be provided for food stamps. Some say it's too little and families are in more need. Some say that it's too much and there's wasteful government spending. We're going to investigate this topic today by doing a one sample t test for me. Let's skew it. Today's lesson is on the hypothesis test for one mean. This is lesson 8.2 in our course sequence. Specifically today, we're gonna to be talking about SNAP benefits, the supplemental nutrition assistance program that is often referred to as food stamps. Um, some argue that SNAP does not provide enough to families in need and people still go hungry with food stamps. Others say that SNAP might be too much. It's wasteful government spending and people use it for fraudulent purposes. This is from a famous case of SNAP fraud in Utah. So today's key analysis will be, does SNAP provide enough to actually cover the costs of essential food items for families? If you wanna follow along using notes, you can print up our handout at this website. So let's start by talking about how we would explore this using a one sample t-test for a mean. We're gonna go through an informal version of this hypothesis test right now, just to understand it conceptually, and then we'll show you how to do the four-step state plan do conclude process that you can do on a regular FRQ and get full credit. So SNAP provides benefits that should cover a full bundle of goods per month for people who could otherwise not afford it. Um, this can include essential foods like bread, cereals, grains, vegetables, and fruits and canned items. Um, and specifically, you wouldn't want to include snacks, coffee, spices, desserts, alcohol, et cetera, things that one doesn't, doesn't need um, assistance in terms of nutrition. Um, so let's imagine a healthy essentials only diet. So every day, imagine that you, for breakfast, eat a bowl of cereal, a banana, and a glass of orange juice. Then for lunch, you eat a turkey sandwich with some pretty uh, plain fixings, a side of apple and mixed nuts, a glass of diet soda. And then for dinner, you just have chicken veggies, rice, black beans, and tap water. And note that this diet, if you assume it every day, has no snacks, no alcoholic beverages, no miscellaneous items. It's just a pure essentials only diet. So hopefully food stamps would cover this. And if you get that diet for a week at, or for a day out to a month, this is what it would translate to in terms of groceries you have to pick up for every month. Um, this is what you would have. So this bundle of goods doesn't just have one price. It depends on the store at which you shop, the brand of the items you pick and location, which is gonna vary a lot by region. So let's try and find the average price of this bundle of goods in grocery stores across the United States to see does SNAP provide enough for that average bundle. So in fiscal year 2020, the maximum monthly SNAP allotment for a household was 100, for one person household was $194. So is this maximal allotment enough to cover the true US average costs for that essentials only bundle of groceries. So let's test it by looking at data because we don't know the true population mean uh, of this uh, bundle price, but we can get a sample and try and estimate it and see does the SNAP allotment cover it. So a simple random sample of 31 US grocery stores found the average cost of this essentials bundle was $199 with a sample standard deviation of about $26. So is there convincing evidence that the maximum SNAP allotment, the $194, doesn't cover this amount of groceries? So let's do a hypothesis test because we see that convincing statistical evidence line. We know we have to do a hypothesis test. So the null is the default belief about parameter's value. Remember that. And then remember also the alternative is our unproven belief about the value for which we have to gather evidence and show. So the null hypothesis, often called the dual hypothesis, because nothing new or interesting is happening and we assume it to be true. It's the default belief. The alternative is the interesting hypothesis. It's, it's a research hypothesis that we might try and demonstrate or show, and we need to collect evidence to support it. Um, so remember our uh, analogy to the court system, innocent until proven guilty, nil, null, excuse me, until proven the alternative. So the innocent hypothesis here, the default belief is that food stamps cover the true average cost of the essential bundle in the US. The proven guilty, the alternative belief that we have to show evidence for is that food stamps don't quite cover it. And then we can make a claim about that and maybe have some policy change. So the null is that food stamps cover the true average cost of groceries. The alternative is that they don't. So let's make these numerical. So this are, these are claims about the average. 
We're going to say mu is the true mean price of the essentials only grocery bundle in the United States. And we're going to say that average is exactly the SNAP maximum allotment. It's exactly $194. SNAP provides the exact amount needed to cover the mean price of these groceries. And if the food stamps don't cover it, that means the mean price of the groceries is going to be greater than the amount that SNAP provides, $194. So we got our simple random sample, and we're going to see is this sample mean of $199, which is a little bit higher than 194 at this sample size, is that convincing evidence that in terms of the population, SNAP doesn't actually provide enough? So let's start, as always, when performing a hypothesis by assuming the null is true. We're gonna assume that the true mean price of this groceries is $194. So we always start by assuming the null is true. Um, so U.S. store, the essential only bundle in U.S. stores is the actual true average is no more than $194. So we're going to assume it's true. And we're going to ask ourselves, if the null is in fact true, the true mean is at 194, how likely is the data that we gather? So we assume the true mean among all stores is $194. And we're going to see if we get samples of 31 randomly from all those stores, what sample means are we likely to get if that 194 across all stores is true? So we collected bundle prices from 31 grocery stores. At this sample size, let's think about what sample means we're likely to get. And we get this by getting the sampling distribution of all possible sample means from the population. So we know from before that for a mean, the sampling distribution under certain conditions looks normal, centered at the true mean with a standard error as modeled by the standard deviation of the data divided by the square root of the sample size. So we're assuming the null is true. So we're gonna assume the true mean is 194. We know that we're sampling 31 grocery stores. So we're gonna plug in 31 for our sample size. Um, we don't really know though the true standard deviation of these price bundles. We don't know that. So what can we do? Well, we saw in the problem, the sample standard deviation among our sample was $26 about. So let's plug that in as an estimate of the true standard deviation of bundle prices. We plug that in and we calculate our standard error as 4.67, almost five. Here's a problem though, is that we're uncertain about the standard error because we use the sample standard deviation there instead of the true standard deviation. So we need to use that wider T distribution to capture that greater uncertainty. So we're gonna use a T distribution. The degrees of freedom is N minus one again. So that's a sample size 30 minus one, uh, sorry, 31 minus one is 30. And so we have a T distribution, degrees of freedom 30 centered at 194 with that standard error. So now we're gonna test our average cost, which was 199.45, how likely was that data under the null assumption? So among the 31 stores, we got 199 was the average price. We're going to plot that here, and we're going to see how far away is that from the center? How unlikely is the data we got under the null assumption and its sampling distribution? Recall the 68.95.99.7 rule under a normal curve, 68% of the data is within one standard error of the true mean, and then 95% is within two standard errors to true mean. So it's pretty unlikely to get more than two standard errors out. So how do we figure out how many standard deviations we are away from the center in our sampling distribution? Well, recall the idea of z-scores. Z-scores measure how many standard deviations a data value is above or below the mean. And you take the data value, get its difference from the mean, and divide by the standard deviation. We can do the same thing, but with our T statistic. We can show how many standard errors our sample mean, our sample mean from the data is above or below the null hypothesis value that's at the center of our sampling distribution. So we can take the sample mean, subtract the null hypothesis mean value, and divide by the standard errors to see how far above or below in terms of standard errors our data was. So if you want to get the exact formula for this, the standard error recall is going to be the uh, sigma, or in our case, the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n. And the smaller this test statistic is, the less unusual your measurements are under the null subject because you're fewer standard errors out from the null. The higher it is, the more unusual your data was, and you might think about rejecting the null. So if it's small, you can't necessarily doubt the null assumption. So how unlikely was this data? Well, let's get how many standard errors away our sample was from the null hypothesis, um, or our t-stat, in other words. So 
we subtract off the data mean, the sample mean from the null hypothesis mean. That's a distance of about 5.45. And we divide by the standard error. The standard error was about 4.67. So our T stat, the number of standard errors we are away from the mean is 1.167. So the sample mean is only about one standard error away from the hypothesized null value. It's not a lot. So getting the sample mean at one standard error away is, is somewhat likely. The typical deviation, it's, it's pretty, pretty close to that. So let's try and quantify exactly how unlikely this is by using what we call the p-value, this probability. Um, the p-value is going to be the probability of getting our sample mean or more extreme under the null assumption. So in order to do this, if you want to do it in a calculator really quick, you can do second vars uh, six for the TCDF on a TI-84. If you do that, um, we're going to plug in these values here, uh, take a pause and try it out on your calculator if you want to try it out yourself. Otherwise, I'll show you another method for doing it later on. We get a value of 0.126, i.e. 12.6%. So it's not that unlikely. It's really not unlikely. And that is the p-value. That's the probability of observing your measured test statistic or more extreme, assuming the null is true. Remember, p stands for probability here and it's how unlikely our sample data is. That is the p-value. There's a 12.6% chance that we get a sample mean of 199 or more high or higher uh, under the null assumption. So it's, it's pretty likely. So let's recap what we did so far. Um, we first assumed that the null is true, that the true mean of the sample bundles is going to be equal to the amount SNAP provides, $194. Then we got a sample, and then among the 31 stores, we found that that sample price was a little bit higher, 199.45. So maybe we can reject the null. So how unlikely was the sample data? We found the p-value 0.126, 12.6%. That's still somewhat likely to get something that high if the null is true. So since our sample is somewhat likely under the null assumption, we might not be able to reject it. So let's go to our conclusion. Under my assumption that the true mean price of the essential bundle was 194, the actually observed data where I got that 199 sample mean is still somewhat likely, 0.126 due to sampling error. So I can't reject the null assumption. I just cannot reject it. We don't have convincing evidence that the true average price of the bundle is higher than the SNAP benefits provided. Um, so let's talk about this in terms of a four-step procedure to make sure you get full credit on your FRQs. Remember, the four steps is just a way to organize your work such that you get full credit. So when you see a question like this and a page to answer it, you think, okay, four steps for inference, convincing statistical evidence, I need to do a hypothesis test. For the state phase, you should state your hypotheses numerically. You should define what the parameters are. So we said mu is the true mean price of the essentials bundle. And the significance level we're going to assume by default is going to be 0.05 unless stated otherwise. We're going to name the inference method and check conditions. We're going to do a one sample t-test for mu if all conditions are met. We're going to check these conditions. And recall, we have to check conditions to make sure our sampling distribution, which is undergirding all of this, is valid. Random, the sample of 31 grocery stores are collected randomly, so we have unbiased estimates. 10% condition, our sample size has to be less than one-tenth of the population size. I'm pretty sure that 31 is less than 10% of all U.S. grocery stores, definitely more than 310 grocery stores in the U.S. And the sample size to be greater than or equal to 30 for our normality condition to be valid. 31 is greater than or equal to 30, so our sample size is large enough. We're good to go. Now we perform our calculations. Uh, if you want to do a simpler way than the way we did by hand earlier, you can use your calculator like this. Take a pause and try it out on your TI-84. Um, once you do that, you should write down the parameters you used in your calculator command and then the final T statistic value you got, 1.168, and the P value you got, 0.126. Now let's reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. We're going to use this conclusions template to make a nice concise answer. And we say because our P value of 0.126 is greater than our alpha, we cannot reject the null. We fail to reject it. We do not have convincing evidence. The true mean price of an essential grocery bundle in the US is actually greater than what SNAP provides. We don't have evidence, uh, convincing evidence that SNAP is under providing for people. So let's discuss what this means. If we look back at the raw data we gathered, the 31 sampled grocery stores, they had a price, there was one store that had a price of $245 for the essentials bundle. That's way higher. Um, so the $194 for SNAP for the person that shops at this store would fall short. 
So our discussion question for today is, given the conclusion of our tests, which show that we can't reject the null that uh, SNAP provides enough, how is this high price of this one store that we sampled even possible? And look at the hint below. That's it for today's statisticians. Have a good one.